Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. I'm Caleb Oaks. Hey, Caleb. I wanted to talk to you in this episode about rolling out BI solutions to large audiences. And we run into this uh, from time to time. Actually, we're rolling out solutions all the time. But I'm talking about really large audiences. I'm thinking of a company in particular. I won't say their name, but... uh, where your team built a bunch of, well, did a bunch of data work, but then built a bunch of BI and reports for, I think, 600 retail locations or something. Mm -hmm. And there can definitely be some pitfalls in rolling out to that many users. I mean, you can get confusion, chaos, people then don't buy in, you know, Mm -hmm. a a lot can go wrong. So I kind of wanted to just pick your brain about best practices. And I think they probably apply even to much smaller rollouts, but you really have to think about them if you're going to a super broad audience. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of, I mean, you're right. I mean, even with uh, smaller audiences, you can still run into some of these things. And I think it just, the, the problems just are exacerbated the more people that are, that you're rolling it out to. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess just to start, just thinking about some of the lessons learned there. I mean, um, the th- first thing that comes to mind is just people use data differently, right? One person's going to be expecting it to look this way. The other person's going to be expecting it to look that way. Um, and they're, they're going to interpret it differently too, right? So the biggest, I guess, one thing that's that's top of mind right now is watching uh, – there was this existing report that we recreated and the columns in the report, that was just a table of data, um, did not tie out. Like you couldn't manually do the calculation across. So it was like, we have this much revenue, we've done, th- there's this many invoices and this is the average invoice amount, right? And you do the math on a calculator and, you, and it's wrong. And it, you couldn't yeah. make, get those to match. There was a reason for that, but it was very it's very confusing it was confusing for me even to look at i was like i don't i guess i don't know how this works <laughs> um you know making sure that that like everything kind of logically and intuitively makes sense um in your reports is gonna it's it's going to make for a better user experience and it's going to save you a lot of time answering questions oh right because right? oh yeah yeah, because there's a help desk component of this, which mm-hmm. is people coming back saying, "Wait, this isn't right." That's a that's a good, yeah. This is a good topic for another episode. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this lately. Where, when you're building BI and you're doing BI and you're also supporting reports and BI, uh, there's it's kind of unique, right? So like you're not a software developer where you're just developing the software and the software's out there kind of running and any bugs might go to a support desk or whatever. Um, it's kind of like everything is comes back to you. So you're trying to do development on new stuff or, you know, whatever, whatever you need to do, but you're also like supporting the end right. user. Um, maybe one, maybe in 10 years, it'll, it'll change to where you're, you've got a development more like a software, like you've got a development team and you've got like a support type team. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's how it works in really big organizations, but where we operate predominantly is the, it's not the case, right? Well, I mean, even if you could have a big organization and could afford to have those two teams, there's huge inefficiencies because mm-hmm. you've got so you've got a developer working on reports, doing the BI, they, they know the business, they know what the client's looking for, or the, the users are looking for, and if you throw that to someone else to do support on, I mean, it might be something simple like, oh, this joint is wrong or something, or this measure was just written a little wrong. I need to, I need to fix the filter on it. But chances are it's not that simple. And even right. if it is, the person who's developing currently working in that is going to do it way faster. Right. right. Way faster. Yeah, more than you need to be asked about it. Or I don't whatever. know. How you, I guess you could get AIs that are so good at fixing stuff in maybe yeah. 10 years <laughs> in the future. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. Maybe. But, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so what are best practices? I'm assuming you do some kind of a user acceptance testing with a smaller group. Mm-hmm. You make sure that you know your at least uh, your stakeholders or your main stakeholders are saying, okay, this looks good. What kind of communication do you do? Is there do you roll it out in stages? Do you pump it all out at once? Yeah. I mean, how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, in an ideal world. Um, I would go one report at a time and 
so that would that would look like generally kind of how you laid it out so you'd have and this is the same for whether you're working with a large group or a small group but generally you should try and follow these practices sometimes there's such a rush for it and the culture of the company's like we don't care if we need to like go around and around with this that's because we don't we have anything good right now yeah. anyway yeah um but you know like if you if i could have it perfect i would go one report um go through a uat period get people's you know thoughts on it um correct anything that we maybe have missed make any enhancements that we want to do roll it then you know communication this whole time so communication to the uat group on what to expect like here's what we need from you we need this kind of feedback on this report here's how to give us good feedback that's really important um if you could if i could get everybody that ever did uat to give feedback on like data and how the reports work um, at a detailed enough level, I, I would be a very happy yeah, person, right? Yeah. To where they're they're not just saying, "Well, this doesn't look right." It's like, no, here's exactly what here's. I would expect this product to be included in this amount, and you can see here that it's not. You know, yeah, yeah. That would that that's that would be amazing. That's that compared to, well, this people. just doesn't look right. <laughs> very <laughs> it's different. Not that great. Right? Yeah. 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 So you want to do that. So you want to like set it up. Make sure that they have good expectations on what they should be doing through that period once they get through that period um you, like i said you make any adjustments you, you communicate to the larger group probably before uat letting them know like kind of what's happening then um, communicate to the larger group of hey this is going to be released here's the date that it's going to be released um push it out give them instructions on what to do when they have problems or questions um and then hope you hear from people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Well, because if you're not hearing from them, they may not be using it. Yeah, they probably aren't. Especially yeah. if you've got a big group. That means that, that yeah, they're, they're not looking at it. Right? Yeah. Because people are going to have questions. They're going to have thoughts. Um, even if it's not that many, you, you know, they're going to they're gonna hit you up if they're using it. What's your messaging when you get an irate user? Oh, I liked our old system, and now I can't tell what's going on. Yeah. How, yeah. do you, how do you approach that? It's usually just a training thing, you know. Yeah. Um, I think the the biggest message to kind of repeat to people is, you know, we want this to be useful for you. So we really want this feedback, right? Like what was so great about the old system that that this is not doing for you? Because they're probably not the only person that feels that way, right? right? Um, they're probably just the squeaky wheel. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just reiterating that point, like, we're all on the same page here like this is something that we're building for you you're you know to make your life better um so tell us how we can do that yeah good all right any other uh, parting thoughts for people who may be looking at a rollout either small or big uh yeah i mean i definitely do your diligence up front like the uat you, know, you mean or just even before you get to uat okay. like be confident in what you've got like don't don't succumb to the pressure just to get something out that's going to, um, you know, it's not like you have one shot at it, but you kind of, you kind of do. It's that do, first impression you know? thing. Yeah, it's the yeah. first impression, and you want to make sure that it's, that um, what you put out there is, you know, something that people are not going to just not look at, just like totally yeah. ignore because it's just that bad, you know. Don't treat um, it lightly. Yeah. Don't, don't push it out just to meet a deadline. I mean, yeah. hopefully meet your deadline, but... If you don't, don't put it out suboptimal. Yeah. It's going to cost you more. Right. Yeah. And then let's say that you do, worst case scenario, you do have to do that. That's part of your communication. Yeah. You know, here's where we're at. Like, that's, that's where I've seen things go wrong um, in more ways than just a report rollout is when expectations just don't match what what uh, yes. what happens, right? So as yes. long as you set the expectation of like, hey, this is very much a work in progress. We're releasing it because X, Y, Z then that you're usually in a better that's, spot that's you a know? good point yeah i can think of for myself we had an internal report come out recently um and there were a couple of visualizations on it that had a little banner over it you know under construction and um if those hadn't been there i would have i would have looked at it and said wait these don't seem right and would have you know spent cycles on that when it's just not needed right yeah yeah, yeah. exactly good all right well thank you you're welcome If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We'd be grateful. 
You can visit our website at bluemargin.com for more insights and resources. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.